Look the part, play the part. Yako sponsors Vanarama National League on BT Sport. everyone and welcome to the Vanarama National League Highlight Show here on BT Sport. Over the next half an hour we'll bring you all the action and reaction from the latest round of fixtures. First, here are your headlines. Forest Green go neck and neck with Lincoln at the top. There's a late, late winner for Inform Gateshead. And it'll be Macclesfield against York in the FA Trophy Final. With leaders Lincoln once again chasing a place at Wembley, Forest Green Rovers' new victory on Saturday would bring them level on points at the top of the National League. Wrexham with the visitors to the new lawn looking to do the double over their high-flying hosts. The Welsh club's playoff hopes appeared to be over for another season and they were on the back foot from the off. Liam Noble's effort palmed away by goalkeeper Chris Dunn. It was a frustrating first 45 minutes for Mark Cooper's men, but they made the breakthrough on the stroke of half-time. An almighty goal-mouth scramble saw the ball roll to defender Dale Bennett, who was on the score sheet for the first time since August. Rovers began the second half as they ended the first. Just two minutes after the restart, Kane Woolery was met by the clumsiest of challenges from Martin Riley, penalty to Forest Green. Skipper Noble stepped up to double the lead and put his side on course for a fourth home league win in a row. Wrexham's goal was under siege. Dunn had to be at his very best to thwart Christian Deutsch and then Darren Carter following up. But Dunn was soon caught in no man's land as Deutsch lifted the ball over him. 21 this season for the club's top scorer and 13 in his last 13 games. Lincoln may have three games in hand, but Forest Green have the points in the bag and sit joint top of the table. I was pleased with the clean sheet as well. Second half we didn't have too much to deal with and we kept control of the ball and, and made them work hard. So a pleasing day and um, another big one on Tuesday. Us as a football club, we look at ourselves, it wasn't good enough. Uh, other than that, keep the second half, we... Uh, as we've we been playing the last few weeks, we, we didn't play good enough uh, to a man. We didn't win enough first balls, second balls, and obviously when we did have control of the ball, we, uh, our passing wasn't as slick and as smooth as it has been over the last few weeks. Dagenham and Redbridge made their first trip to Holker Street, boosted by a crucial victory over promotion rivals Forest Green last time out, and John Still's men led after 11 minutes. Only Corey Whiteley will know if he was going for goal direct from a corner, but it found the back of the Barrow net. The hosts responded well and when the ball fell to Paul Turnbull inside the area, the equaliser looked to certainty, but Elliot Justin kept him out. Barrow's playoff hopes have suffered in 2017, but their home form hasn't deserted them. Only two defeats in the last 26, and they had the chance to level before the break when Craig Robson brought down Richie Bennett, penalty given. Liam Hughes just found a way past Justum, his first goal since scoring against the Daggers in November. Stills players have been impressive on the road this season, but they were looking at the prospect of back-to-back -back away defeats when Musa Diara squeezed in from an acute angle to give Paul Cox's side the advantage. The visitors bombarded the Barrow goal to try and rescue a point. Jonathan Flat was forced into a fine reaction save. The hosts hung on as Dagenham lost further ground on the teams at the top. Good result for us, but I think on this case as well, the performance was excellent, especially with the ball. I thought we relaxed with the ball and, and looked a, a little bit more composed than we, we have done of late. So, yeah, overall a good, a good day. I can only be pleased with our performance. I've got no real problems with how we've played. Uh, could we have scored another goal? Yeah, it would have been good. Our boys are unsure whether that right at the end was over the line or not. So you don't know, they're, they're all close calls and, and fine margins, but no, we put in a good performance and I was very pleased with it. No team in the National League is in better form than Gateshead right now. Unbeaten in seven matches, Neil Aspin's side have lifted themselves into the top five and firmly into the playoff picture. By contrast, Woking had dropped back into the relegation zone last weekend, but they took a shock lead on Tyneside. Defender Terrell Thomas with his third goal in seven matches. 
Gary Hill's players had the better of the first period and might have added to their advantage. Goes the Ugru strike saved by James Montgomery in the Gateshead goal. Woking had enjoyed a 5-1 victory on this ground last season, but Gateshead are a different proposition in this campaign and they were a team transformed after the interval. Luke Hannant will feel he should have done better when stabbing wide of goal. When the equaliser arrived, it inevitably came courtesy of Danny Johnson, a poacher's goal from Gateshead's leading marksman and his eighth in his last eight games. The host began to pile on the pressure and when Johnson was presented with another sight of goal, it was a shock to see the striker fluff his lines. Woking had suffered a whopping 13 away defeats this season and they were hanging on for dear life as Wes York's header was kept out by Michael Polk. But the travelling fans were left heartbroken in the 91st minute. The best move of the match saw Johnson link up with Mitch Brundle he picked out York to condemn Woking to another defeat. Glory for Gateshead, who've now taken 22 points from a possible 24. Really pleased with the uh, attitude of the players in the second half. I thought they, they did everything you could ask to try and come back from a goal down. And uh, it showed that they, you know, how important it is to, to, to keep maintaining the run we're on. You know, a point would have been a good point at Gateshead. We're looking for wins, we know that. We were in a battle, we are in a... We're in a relegation, more than a deep relegation battle now. We know that. We've got to try and win four games for mate. It's a tall order, but we'll keep going to the end and see where it takes us. Dover were dismantled 5-0 by Boreham Wood in midweek, having also failed to score in their last three league matches. A home fixture with Bromley felt like a must-win game for Chris Kinnear's side. Moses Emmanuel started against the club he left in the summer. He was a man on a mission as he worked space for the shot, denied by a combination of keeper Ross Flitney and the post. The hosts found some joy from the long throw in the second half. First, Ross Lafayette forced Flitney into a point-blank save. Then Flitney allowed another delivery through his legs, let off by the Bromley back line. Dover were on their worst goal drought at this level in over 15 years, a drought that finally ended when Ricky Modest's cross was bundled in by Joe Healy. Despite his team's troubles in front of goal, that's Healy's fourth in ten league games for the club. Healy was again the hero when he cleared Alan Dunn's header off the line as Dover won for the first time in four games. Today we had so many chances, thought oh, it's another one of those days where we can't score, but uh, no, we won that 1-0. Against Bromley side that played with a lot of spirit, gave it the best, it's a local derby, uh, so we're, that's, we're more than pleased. With Gateshead and Dover both victorious, the pressure was on Aldershot to take three points and keep pace in the race for the playoffs. Opponents Sutton United were still looking nervously over their shoulders towards the dreaded drop zone. But it was Paul Doswell's players who started brighter in Hampshire, first to every loose ball. Kieran Cadogan's snapshot turned wide by Aldershot keeper Jake Cole. In a one-sided first half, Gary Waddock's men were caught napping in midfield again as Adam Coombs found himself clean through on goal. Cole making himself big to keep the score at 0-0. Sutton have won just twice on the road all season in the National League. When Coombs again failed to break the deadlock, Doswell may have sensed victory number three wouldn't be forthcoming. To add insult to injury, it was Aldershot who made the breakthrough just before half-time. Idris Carney was denied, but Nicky Bailey's clearance rebounded in off Sutton goalkeeper Will Puddy for an own goal. A slice of luck for the hosts who led at the break. The away team didn't curb their attacking instincts in the second half. Cadogan again in on goal, this time screwing his effort well wide. At the other end, Kundai Benyu's free kick called Puddy into action once again. But Sutton's lack of guile in front of goal would prove crucial as Aldershot wrapped the game up in the 94th minute. With bodies thrown forward, Bernard Mensah had the freedom of the penalty area to slot home his first goal since October. Aldershot registered their first victory in four matches, not that their manager was impressed. I thought we were poor today. Um, I thought Sutton 
uh, they stopped us playing. You've got to give them credit for the, the way they set their, their store out against us to stop us playing. But um, our performance levels were nowhere near the level that we've uh, reached this season. But we drew a little bit of luck, and I think the first goal <laughs> summed that up. Over the course of the season, we've not had much. You know, I, I genuinely think we're a good addition to this league, um, but we need to make sure that we, we get those wins as quick as we can. We've got 10 games to go. We feel we need three wins out of the 10, and we will get them. Having thumped over 5 0 in midweek, Boreham Wood's next visitors to Meadow Park were Geisley. Adam Lockwood's side have been resurgent in their battle to stay in the National League, victorious in their previous two away matches. If Luke Garrard was expecting another goal glut from his team, he may have had second thoughts when Ricky Shakes was denied twice in quick succession. The officials ruling the ball hadn't crossed the line. Both teams were unbeaten in their previous three, but it was Boreham Wood who made all the running in the first half. Geisley keeper John Maxted producing a brilliant save from Jai Reason's strike. Shake scored a hat-trick in the victory over Dover, but it wasn't to be his day as his effort was cleared off the line and then scrambled to safety. Another point for Geisley in their fight for survival. A third nil-nil in four matches for Boreham Wood. The boys are telling me 100% it was in, so I'm going to have to look at the footage. Kenny's saying it is that much, Joe DeVere is saying that much, but they're both saying it was in, it was past the line. Um, and they're the, they're the details, we didn't get a run of the green today. Yeah, it, it's frustrating, but we had enough opportunities to take the lead. North Ferriby are embroiled in a relegation scrap and faced a vitally important game against Solihull. The Villagers started the day six points from safety with just nine games to play. The Moors, in their debut season in the fifth tier, weren't safe from relegation, but a win would probably be enough to keep them up. Solihull opened the scoring after goalkeeper Rory Watson pushed a 40th minute shot from Amari Sterling James against the post. Simeon May was on hand to tap in from close range. Three minutes later, North Ferriby were level when a corner cleared to the edge of the box found Middlesbrough Loney Robbie Tinkler, who fired home the first goal of his career. However, Solihull went back in front in the 63rd minute. Amari Sterling James got on the end of a through ball and despite being fouled, kept his composure to beat Watson for his eighth goal of the season. The visitors made the point safe in the 76th minute when Ashley Sammons delivered a great free kick for George Carline to score with a towering header. And Norte Norte wrapped up the scoring in stoppage time after good work from fellow sub Regan Charles Cook. Solihull have now scored four away goals three times this season. Ferriby have a mountain to climb if they're to escape the drop. Second half performance was probably the worst display of our season, you know, and that's even putting aside. Um, second half, the standards were nowhere near what we expect or we like. It was like a switch turning off second half, totally different team. Never come out and never offered nothing. And it was, you know, like I say, it was our worst display of the season. They've not let me down, you know, and They've let themselves down. The standards are set. Uh, you know, the Woking game the week before at home, where we we worked and we fought for everything. First half today, we worked hard, fought for everything, got balls in the box, what we asked them to. Second half, they did they, they, nothing. So they've got to respond. It was a difficult first half. Um, the wind sort of uh, played into to their hands. Uh, but it was about defending it well and, and, and coming in at half time still in the game and you know we was always set up for second half to, to, to use the win to our advantage. Braintree went into this one looking for their first victory in four games but Southport's form was even worse. They arrived in Essex with one point from their last eight. It was the visitors who started brighter and Ewan Murray almost opened the scoring in spectacular fashion. His overhead kick hitting the post after beating Ben McNamara. Braintree also had the chance to take the lead, an inviting cross from Christopher Twardek, not one for Reese Hall-Johnson to get to. 
Sam Korn was a late addition to the home team's starting lineup, but repaid the faith shown by manager Hacken Hay Retton as he broke the deadlock right on half time. It was Korn's first goal for Braintree, his first as well since December 2015. After waiting 15 months for one goal, Korn added a second just before the hour mark, blasting past Craig King after being put through by Michael Cheek. It was one-way traffic after that and Southport's afternoon was summed up by a tame Jim Stevenson effort. The result leaves Southport rooted to the bottom of the table and manager Andy Priest has now lost five of his six matches in charge. We suffered the consequence of conceding a goal from from a set piece, um, but second half we came out and we started brightly again, got on top and just a ball to the edge of the box and uh, the lads put it away well. So really disappointed because it was an opportunity uh, to get three points that I think we've let slip away. Chester, without a home win in 2017, began the day level on points with Eastleigh. Richard Hill's team were fresh from victory over Barrow, which ended an 11 game winless run. Eastley went close through Matt Tubbs after four minutes. Alex Lynch getting down well to save at his near post. Chester carved some good opportunities but weren't clinical in front of goal. Tom Shaw's efforts landing on the roof of the net. With virtually the last kick of a poor game, Scott Wilson claimed the points as he turned in Ben Close's corner to make it back-to-back -back wins for Eastley for the first time since September. So, Forest Green Rovers have gone level on points with leaders Lincoln, although Danny Cowley's men do have three games in hand. The top two meet at Sinsel Bank next Saturday in a game which could prove pivotal in the race for promotion, and you can see it live on BT Sport. No one has a better record than Gateshead over the last eight games, seven wins and a draw, making them serious promotion contenders. Macclesfield can also challenge for the playoffs if they can win their games in hand. There's no change at the bottom, but it looks like time is running out for Southport, who've lost eight of their last nine. North Ferriby and Woking were also beaten. York are also embroiled in the relegation dogfight, but on Saturday they went to Lincoln defending a 2-1 lead from the first leg of their FA Trophy semi-final. The teams are separated by 39 points in the National League, and after their run to the quarter-finals of the FA Cup, Lincoln were favourites to get to Wembley for the first time in their history. Manager Gary Mills was confident his York side could dominate away from home and they generated a good early chance. Amari Morgan-Smith's long-range effort just wide. A crowd of 8,500 willed Lincoln to score and Sean Raggett duly obliged midway through the second half, turning in Matt Reed's flick on to level the aggregate score at 2 all. The Imps spurned a great chance to take the lead, Reed with another flick on, but Elliot Whitehouse couldn't control his shot. There were no more goals, so extra time required to separate the two clubs. The decisive moment controversial, Hamza Ben Sharif's shot struck Luke Waterfall, with referee Ben Toner initially letting play continue before consulting with his assistant as York's players appealed for handball. After a chat with his colleague, Toner awarded the penalty. Scott Fenwick fired low past Paul Farman from the spot to send York through to the final. It was an emotional moment for Mills, who returns to Wembley with York, having led them to trophy and playoff final success five years ago. It was a goal down on Tuesday. We come back. Uh, we were two goals down at Sutton last Saturday. We come back. So it just shows the dressing room. They're fighting all the way. We, we've got a hell of a fight to, to stay in this league, which is the most important thing. We've got to make sure we do that now, and then we've got a, a day out at Wembley to celebrate that. I'm just disappointed, disappointed um, to, to lose the way we did. Um, obviously, we expended a lot of energy in the, in the tie and, and, and come up short, so it's a hard one to take. I thought the referee did well, I have to say that. I thought it was a difficult game to referee, and I thought he refereed the game really well. I know. There's been a lot of criticism of referees um, by, by managers at our level, um, but I thought he refereed the game well. Not an easy game to referee. He obviously didn't give it, and then the linesman, it's in the centre of the pitch, the referee was only a few yards away from it. The linesman's then given it from the sideline, which, which felt strange. I'm, I'm 
we've just seen it, so, so we all know that, 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 that it wasn't a penalty. But it's not easy being a referee, so, so no, we're, we're put our energy into what we can control, and that's, that's, that's our team and our performance. It was on as even after the first leg in the other FA Trophy semi-final. The last time Macclesfield travelled to Prenton Park, they suffered a 1-0 defeat on Boxing Day. Another tight affair was expected. Rovers made a bright start. Adam Leckie released James Norwood on the left. Scott Flinders was called into action. Mekie and Norwood once again linked up. Norwood shot from the edge of the area, forcing another good save. Oh. Macclesfield up the tempo in the second half. Ollie Norburn wriggling his way past two Tranmere defenders before striking his shot against the crossbar. Norburn had scored in the first leg and proved to be the match winner here, beating goalkeeper Scott Davis with a cracking finish from a difficult angle. Tramir pushed for an equaliser, but Macclesfield responded well. Chris Holroyd burst down the left flank, skipping past Steve McNulty before Davis parried the shot. Macclesfield, the very first winners of the trophy back in 1970, can now look forward to a Wembley showdown with York on May the 21st, a game you'll be able to see live on BT Sport. For everybody connected to the football club, uh, really pleased for the players, they put in a lot of hard work. The little reward at times and uh, you know, to get to Wembley is, uh, is a great reward. Pleased for the sports because at the start of the season uh, we were struggling to, to get enough money together uh, to put a squad, a squad together. Uh, and without them, uh, we wouldn't be able to, done that, to do that, um, and that's enabled us to uh, to get to Wembley. We've been the better side over two legs, you know. The, the early goal at our place in the first minute gave them an advantage, I thought, but we carried on, we plugged away, got a goal back. Um, we come here today with knowing what we can do, and we've come away, we've come away with a win. Obviously devastated because we had an opportunity to get, try and get to Wembley. We've missed that. Um, but listen, we, we have to know dust ourselves done very quickly. But another game on Tuesday noon and we have to move on. Lincoln may have missed out in the trophy, but it's all to play for in the National League. Make sure you tune in next Saturday as the leaders take on second-placed Forest Green at Sinsel Bank. That's exclusively live on BT Sport 1 and in 4K UHD from 11.45. That's all we've got time for this week. Don't forget you can watch all of our programmes on our dedicated YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again very soon. Look the part, play the part. Yako sponsors Vanarama National League on BT Sport.